Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've been talking about the battery charging and starting system over the past couple weeks here, and today we're going to continue on talking about the alternator and how the car creates the power that it needs in terms of electrical energy. So let's get started. On the left side here, under your contents, you should have a folder called Fundamental or Fund eLearning. If you select that one, you'll see the week that we're on right here, 413. And then you'll see the module over on this side. And it's called Alternator Introduction. And we'll get that started. There we go. So the first thing that it wants us to do is select the engine right here. So we'll click on that, and it makes it a little bit bigger. And when we go to the next one, now you're going to start to see all the different parts of the engine here. What we're going to focus on today is on the front part right here. And we've got the serpentine belt, and the crankshaft down here spins. It's connected with the engine. And when the uh, harmonic bouncer down here, when this pulley spins, it spins the belt with it. And that's what provides power to all of our accessories. Some of the things it provides power to include the power steering pump to make steering easier. It also provides power to the air conditioner, and that's what gives you the cold air inside the car. And the third thing it provides power to is our alternator. And by spinning this, it creates electricity. Another thing to compare it to would be that the big wind turbines that are out in the field. As the wind spins those blades, they create electricity. It's the same sort of process. So now what it wants us to do is start the engine. So we'll grab the key down here, and we'll turn that until our engine gets going. And now our engine's running. And you can see that belt spinning around, and as the belt spins the pulley, that's going to start creating electricity inside my alternator. So a couple key things that Electude wants you to know about this is the alternator is located on the engine in the engine compartment and is mounted to the block of the engine. Alternator converts kinetic energy which means moving energy of the engine into electrical energy. So we're taking one form of energy and converting it to another form of energy. So the spinning motion of the engine gets converted into electrical energy. The alternator provides all loads in the vehicle with currents and ensures the battery is charged. So there's always an energy reserve. And when they say current, that's another way of saying electricity. And we'll go to the third one. It wants us to point to the alternator, so we'll click on that right there. Now, on some cars, these are real easy to access. On other cars, they're buried in there pretty deep, and they're not easy to take out. So sometimes it's a real simple, less than one hour job to replace these. Other times, it can be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours to try and replace these. So what happens when the engine is running? The engine drives the alternator, and that's what we see happening right here. My crankshaft spinning causes the belt to spin, causes my alternator to spin. So that is true. The alternator converts the engine's kinetic energy into electrical energy. That's also true. By spinning, it creates electrical energy. The engine supplies electrical energy to the alternator. That's going to be false. It's pretty much the other way around. Now we'll go to number five. What is the task of the alternator? It provides current to the consumers of in the car. That's going to be true. And supply current to the starter motor during starting. That's actually going to be false. And I'm going to ask you guys, what does provide power to my starter motor when we start? It's going to be the battery that does that. And that was on our module we did last week. The battery provides power to the starter, so that's false. Ensure the battery is charged. That's also true. So once the car is running, alternator, it's not pictured here, but alternator would send power back to the battery to recharge it. We'll go to number two at the top. So now we're going to take a look at what makes up our alternator on the inside. So we've got some main parts here. There's the housing, which is the outside. We've got the pulley over here that the belt is spinning. We're going to see the rotor on the inside, the stator on the inside, the rectifier over on the side here. There's going to be a voltage regulator on the bottom, and then there's a fan to help keep everything cool. So we'll click on this alternator. Now we see all those things. So as my pulley is spun by the belt, you'll see this main assembly on the inside called the rotor. That also spins, and then I start creating electricity. So what is the task of the pulley? 
Well, the pulley over here is what is used to transfer kinetic energy from the engine to the alternator. It's what spins the alternator. Go to number three. Which component creates the magnetic fields which can be used to generate an alternating current? And that is going to be the rotor. That creates the magnetic field. And basically what you have are north-south magnets. So north-south, north-south, north-south. And that's how we start creating a magnetic field which passes through these wires to create electricity. Just like that shaky flash that I showed you guys when we talked about the ignition coil and we took apart small engines. As that magnetic field passes through the wire, it creates electricity. So that is going to be the rotor. Number four, what is the function of the fan? So right here you'll see a fan. When you create electricity, you also create heat. And we need to manage that heat, otherwise everything gets too hot and can either melt, uh, worst case scenario, or just overheat and burn out electrical components. So it is going to cool down the alternator. And number five, what is the task of the rectifier in an alternator? And the rectifier part, this converts alternating current to direct current. Inside your house or your apartment, um, the electricity that powers the light bulbs is actually a wave up and down, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative type electricity. They call that AC current. And that's what's initially being created here. However, our cars work off of DC current, just like your cell phone, um, direct current. It's just a positive 12 volts. It doesn't go positive, negative. So we need to take all those positive and negatives and just make them straight positive electricity. So it converts an alternating current to a direct current. Our car batteries are 12 volts, direct current, DC. And which component is the voltage generated? That's gonna be the copper wire on the outside. And that is what they call the stator. It's composed of three coils in which alternating current is generated. So as the magnetic field passes through the copper wire, it makes electrons move. That's what creates our electricity. So that's going to be the stator. Number seven, what is the task of the voltage regulator? So down here we have a voltage regulator, and the voltage regulator ensures a constant controlled alternator voltage. We don't want it to go too high, we also don't want it to go too low, and it's going to be the voltage regulator that controls that. So it's going to ensure that the alternator voltage is consistent. And that's the key word there. Which component or which components are driven by the engine? So if we look at this animation, we've got the pulley being driven, we've got the rotor being driven, and we also have the fan being driven. So all those parts are connected by a shaft in the middle. You can see it's spinning right here, and they all spin together. So the voltage regulator, that just stays put down here, so that's false. The stator, that's on the outside, so that doesn't move, so that's false. The fan moves, we see that here. The pulley moves up front. And the rotor in the center here moves also. Number nine. And now we're going to go through and identify all the parts. So on the left we have the pulley. We have the rectifier right here. We have the stator on the outside, all the copper wires. We have a voltage regulator down on the bottom. We've got the rotor. And then we've got our fan. All right, so that wraps up all the basic parts inside of the alternator. Um, you would know this part's going bad. Let's say you replace the battery and the car keeps going dead again. It would be a good idea to do an alternator output test and see if maybe this part has failed uh, before you replace it. Other times, if you get a charging system light on the dash, that indicates something is not right with the charging system. That may also mean something has gone wrong with this. They do fail. It is somewhat common. Um, batteries go bad. Alternators go bad. And you just need to do some diagnostic testing to figure out, is it the battery that's worn out? Is it the alternator that's worn out? Or sometimes it is both of them that fail together. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to us. 
Otherwise, have a wonderful day.